Hey, welcome back. All right, so let's look at topic number one here, alert and console.log. Now, in order for us to actually use a JavaScript, we need a web page of some kind. Now, it's easy to create a web page. So let's click File, New, New File. And I'm going to save this. So now I created a folder on the desktop. So just create a folder on your desktop, name it website or you can name it whatever you prefer and let's create a page now to create a web page normally we use home as the name or index as the name so let's use index and let's put the file extension as .html now the .html will tell the browser that it's actually a website so that's important so save that on the desktop in your folder the other file is this one. So pay no attention to that for other file that's in there. All right. So once we do this, let's create some basic uh, HTML markup. Okay. So I'm going to name this one JS as the title because of course we are dealing in JavaScript. Now it's a good idea to put your JavaScript at the very bottom of the page because usually JavaScript wants to manipulate what's in the body of the page, right? So because of that, it's better to put it at the bottom so that by the time it starts requesting for items, let's say, for example, uh, you have a, uh, a text box here. Now, because the page runs from top to bottom, you need, by the time the script is trying to request for that input, it would have already been put on the page. So this is why we put our JavaScript at the very end, because we want everything else to load in advance so that while we are requesting for it, it actually exists. So to create a script, to add some JavaScript, we use the script tag like so, okay? Now you can put you can put an external file for JavaScript, which we are going to do much later. But for now, we're going to use the internal version like this so that we are all on the same page. So I will save this just like that. And then I will go to that folder. Then I will drag and drop it into my browser. Drag and drop. Mm -hmm. So this is my page. As you can see, there's JS at the top there for the title. Okay, now we see nothing here. Now, the important thing here to know is that in order for you to see an output, you have to tell JavaScript to show you that output. So in our case, there's two ways to do that. The first one is the alert function. So you type alert like that, open and close bracket, and a semicolon. So in JavaScript, every uh, statement should be terminated by a semicolon. So at the end of each statement, put that semicolon. Do not forget that semicolon. It should always be there at the end of every line. So alert. And then what do we want to alert? I'm just going to put some inverted commas like that. So those two inverted commas just mean an empty string. So nothing in there. Or we can say something like, hello world, the usual stuff. Okay, so I let hello world. So let's come back here and let me refresh. And immediately you see that it tells me hello world with an alert. So this is how an alert looks like. However, this is not a very convenient way of showing complex data because you can imagine if there's too much data, then you have a... Uh, it doesn't actually process data that well. The best way to do it is using the console. So this alert is handy in certain cases when there's not too much information, but this console works better. So let me copy that and let me replace. In fact, uh, I'll just copy the console.log part there and replace alert with it. So console.log, hello world. So here now, if I refresh the page, I won't see that alert, but there's another cool tool that we want to talk about, which is the console itself. Now to get to the console, just right click anywhere where the page is empty and then click on inspect element, click. 
So if you're using Chrome, that could just be inspect and not inspect element. So once you get to the inspector here, the inspector here shows you the DOM tree, which we'll talk about much later. But what we are concerned about is the console. So click on the console itself. And then when you come here, you see hello world over there. Now there's this error here because I haven't defined my character encoding style. So let me do that real quick so we can make it shut up. So I'll type metadata and the character set right there. So if I now refresh the page, I just see hello world there, which is what I want, right? Good. So if your console, your console may be like this, but I just clicked on that part because I wanted to see that and move this in the center. So hello world. Now you can tell the console to uh, to show you anything in here. Uh, so which we will do much later on. Okay. So this is all about console. Console will show you a lot of uh, maybe variables that you want to see what's inside them. We're going to talk about variables uh, in, in the next video. But just know that uh, whenever you want to display something useful, you send it to the console like this. Okay. So this is the, the end of part one. We have captured, alert, and console.